All right, so here we are in the N1 as a function of N2 page. Well, what's N1 and N2? Let's start off with that. This is incredible how many years I actually got away with not knowing that. So here's our jet engine and N2, that's this little red shaft in the center, okay? And N2 spins super duper fast. N1, that's the golden shaft here on the outside and it spins much, much slower. And here's how the jet engine works. And by the way, see my How a Jet Engine Works YouTube video where I went to St. Martin's and got blown around by a jet. I really explained a lot of this in good detail. It's a very good video. But the way the jet engine works is a recap. The air comes in the front. It gets compressed by the compressor here, the N2 speed. Fuel is added right here. It expands. Once the air expands, it's going to get out of the engine the easiest way it can. And there's just less resistance going out the back. And for that reason and no other reason, the air races out the back. Well, the thing is, when the air races out of the back of this little N2, that wind goes through this golden windmill. This golden windmill. And this golden windmill is hooked on a shaft to drive this fan here at the front. You see there's a shaft connecting the golden uh, parts of the engine. So each of these components of the engine, the N1 and the N2, spin completely independently of each other. And that's why there's two RPMs with no physical gearing between them at all. It is the wind blowing out of the N2 that turns these golden windmills back here that drive the fan and that's what pulls the airplane forward. Now, what's the relationship between N1 and N2? Does half your N2 mean that you get half of your N1? And the answer is no, not even close. As I've mentioned before, and sorry if it's repetitive, these turbines don't do any work until they're spinning super duper fast. If a turbine is spinning at half its RPM, it might only be doing one eighth of its work. Therefore, we can suggest that when this turbine here, the N2, is spinning at 50% RPM, it might only be outputting enough wind out the back and going through this windmill out the back enough to spin the front fan at a mere 10% RPM. That's right, a 50% N2 might only emit enough wind to drive a 10% N1. And the reason again for that is that this turbine is absolutely useless until it is spinning fast and all turbines are like that. That's kind of an interesting thing. Reciprocating engines work very, very well at low engine speed because the air is compressed in a volume and that piston pushes up the air inside the cylinder and then the compression happens and you know pushes that piston down that can happen very very slowly and still work just fine but a turbine is basically a chain link fence if it's not spinning fast it's like a chain link fence with gasoline on it it doesn't do anything but waste fuel while air just kind of blows through it i mean you can look right through a turbine engine look at an airliner on the ground you can see right through the engine so turbines only work when they're spinning fast because of that the n2 has to be humming to get that n1 to spin at all because of that when you are at say 50 percent n two that little red shaft you're only at 10 percent and one because the n2 just ain't doing any work it's spinning too slow so i found for the cfm 56 engine and the boeing 737 here a power curve of about 3.32 seems to work pretty well and you will have a different power curve for your engine Enter whatever you have to to get the N1 and the N2 to be right, both at idle and at full power. At full power, of course, they'll both be very close to 100. And uh, special thanks to Dutch Pilot Girl for uploading uh, engine start videos to YouTube so I can get all these numbers accurate.